What are the differences between a one and a two-piece bat? Well, it's, it's much more straightforward than I think a lot of uh, sites uh, and videos make it sound like. Um, very simply, a two-piece bat is a bat that has a handle and a barrel that are made separately and then welded together with some sort of connective technology. This is Easton's CXN. This is DeMarini's uh, uh, 2.0 D-Fusion. And I'm sure they'll improve those and change those as time goes on. But when you have those two pieces of a bat, that's what it's called, a two-piece bat. There are some advantages of a two-piece bat, namely that a two-piece bat has the ability to dampen sting in the hand. So when you miss hit a ball in the barrel and this thing's ringing, if you have a connective piece, this can take out the sting and so your hands on the, on the handle are not ringing. Uh, for younger players, it tends to be that that's a good thing because they're not they're not scared to swing as hard um, or they don't get their, their hands wrung and they're just done for the day kind of thing. Um, so in, in that sense, that's what a two-piece bat allows you to do. The other thing a two-piece bat allows you to do is it allows you to, to weld a composite handle onto an aluminum barrel. So with a composite handle, you get the light swing, you get sort of the, the, the composite or the plastic feel of the bat, which doesn't give you as much hand ring uh, because it is composite. But then you also get, like this Voodoo Raw, you get the, uh, this is the purple one, you get the aluminum barrel, which gives it hotter to the wrapper performance. It also gives, so there's no working period for aluminum. It also gives you the ability to get a little more swing weight in the barrel because in general, aluminum alloy is different, is, is a heavier than, than what you could make a composite bat. So those are the verifiable and real differences between a one piece and a two piece. The, the, the thing that often comes up and people get completely wrong, even like major vendors and manufacturers of baseball bats, they talk about bat flex as if this were a golf club. And when you swing really, really fast, they, they claim that somehow the head, the barrel of the bat, like will be delayed like a golf club. Like it will actually stay back and then whip through the zone as you swing at the baseball. That is 100% verifiably untrue. That is That does not happen. Any pictures you have seen of a bat head, the barrel part, flexing backwards and a baseball close by it is only after contact. And that is a function of the, the how stiff the flex is. But even if you look at a wood bat after contact, immediately after contact, even that has some flex in it. The only question is, is how stiff is this connective piece versus a one-piece bat like this Combat Maxim that doesn't have a connective piece. Generally speaking, you have the ability, again, in a two-piece bat to control the stiffness. Recently, most two-piece bats have very stiff flexes, especially in the baseball space. In the softball space, slow pitch, fast pitch, a little bit different, but that, that's really all they control. There's no whipping through the zone with a, with a two-piece bat. That's never the case, and anybody who claims that, you should just walk away and say, ah, you, don't, you don't know what you're talking about. But that, that's really it. When you talk about a two-piece and a one-piece bat, do you want the sting dampening of a two-piece bat? I think most people's knee-jerk reaction is, well, of course, I, I don't want it to sting my hands. But there is actually some value in having direct feedback. It, it's not a problem of single-piece bat users to ever hit the ball and say, oh, man, I, I thought I put that one out. I thought I jacked it. And, and, and they flew out to you know shallow right field. But it is actually not uncommon for a two-piece bat user to hit a baseball or a softball and feel like they destroyed it and find out that they, that they didn't even get to the warning track. That's because this dampening effect, not only does it dampen the actual ring on your hands, but it also sometimes gives you the wrong impression of how well you hit the baseball or the softball. And some people would claim that that's not for long-term development and hitting, that's actually not a good thing. There's also an argument that says a one-piece bat has more power in it. For that same reason that there is no flex in, the, in here, if there is no flex in a one-piece bat, well, we're getting more direct power to the baseball or to the softball in a one-piece bat. That's true unless people who make a two-piece bat, like a DeMarini Voodoo, for example, make it really, really stiff to recreate a one-piece uh, uh, sort of flex at contact, and they can do that now. Um, so, so there you go. It's, it's, those are the simple differences. Do, do you want sting dampening? I tend to believe that people who appreciate, who are younger players, who need as much sting dampening as possible, tend to prefer two-piece bats. As you get stronger and bigger and you've played more baseball, it seems to be one-piece bats tend to make a little more sense. Unless, of course, you really appreciate the idea of a hybrid, which you see a lot of college players do. 
They really appreciate a 716 from Louisville Slugger, a D Marini Voodoo from uh, from D Marini, obviously, because of that hot out of the wrapper performance, and they still get some of this sting dampening, and they like the composite feel of a handle. So there you go. Those are the differences between a one and a two piece baseball or softball bat. Um, and the, and the, the theory is the same for, uh, for any type of bat that you look at. So there you go.